Hi, everyone, and welcome to week 46. This week, we will conclude our series on synthesis and the subtractor. And we're going to be covering how to use LFOs and performance modifiers like velocity, aftertouch, and the pitch and mod wheels to alter our sound. Continuing from last week's episode, we learned how filters and envelopes help shape the sound. Now let's see how we can add some more interesting characteristics to a sound by using LFOs and performance modifiers. Low frequency oscillators, or LFO for short, are oscillators exactly the same as oscillator 1 and 2 that we learned about in week 44. They generate waveforms and a frequency or pitch, but there are some major differences. LFOs usually generate waveforms with very low frequencies, well below the range of human hearing. LFOs are not usually heard or routed to the audio outputs, but instead are used to modulate or change a parameter or aspect of a sound. For example, maybe change the filter cutoff frequency. Or the pitch for vibrato. or maybe the amplitude or volume of a sound to create a tremolo effect. When using an LFO, you can select the waveform type, frequency or speed, the amount or how intense the effect will be, and the destination or which parameter will be changed or affected. The subtractor has two LFOs. LFO1 is a global type LFO, meaning that it will have the same effect on the selected destination parameter no matter how many notes you play or when you play them. LFO1 also has the ability to sync to the song tempo, and when this button is enabled, the frequency knob will show values as time divisions. LFO1 is not key synced, which means that it does not restart the waveform with each note trigger. The destinations on LFO1 are as follows. Pitch of oscillator 1 and 2, pitch of just oscillator 2, filter cutoff frequency of filter 1 and filter 2 if filter link is enabled, FM amount, and remember, you have to have both oscillator 1 and 2 enabled to hear any FM, phase offset for oscillator 1 and 2, and remember, you have to have phase offset enabled to hear it, and the oscillator mix knob. The different waveforms will produce different types of an effect. Let's hear what they each sound like if we select filter 1 frequency cutoff as the destination and increase the amount to full. LFO2 is a polyphonic LFO and does have key sync, which means that when you are playing a sound that is polyphonic, meaning you can play more than one note at a time, each note will trigger its own LFO with its own waveform start time. This allows you to create subtle cross-modulation type effects, or LFOs that beat against each other. <laughs> You also have a keyboard tracking amount knob, which allows the LFO speed to increase as you play notes that are higher on the keyboard. LFO2 does not have a selectable waveform but rather is a triangle type wave, which is the same as the first waveform on LFO1, and also does not have the tempo sync option. The modulation destinations on LFO2 are different than the ones on LFO1, and it is more suited for things like vibrato and pitch, or tremolo, or volume fluctuations. Also, you have a delay parameter for LFO2, which allows a certain amount of time to pass before the effect is heard.
performance modifiers like velocity, aftertouch, and the pitch and mod wheels are useful to give the sound some variation. Using them allows you to create a basic texture and then expand or enhance that sound depending on how hard you strike the keys, which is velocity, how hard you press down on a key after it has been triggered, which is aftertouch, or moving the pitch bend or mod wheels. The velocity section of the subtractor allows you to have certain parameters increase or decrease from their original value depending on how hard you play a note on the keyboard. For example, if I wanted a sound to be louder when I play the keys harder, I would turn the amp knob to the right of center. If I turn it to the left, then the sound would actually get softer as I play keys harder. If I wanted the attack of a sound to be shorter when I play keys harder, I would use the amp envelope attack parameter and give it a negative value. The parameters that can be affected by velocity are amp or volume, FM amount, mod envelope amount, phase offset, filter to cutoff frequency, filter envelope amount, filter decay value, oscillator mix, and amp envelope attack. You can also choose to use external controller modulation sources like aftertouch, again, which is how hard you press down on a key after a note has been triggered, expression, which is usually a pedal that's connected to a controller keyboard, or breath, which is common when using a wind controller, like an Akai EWI, to change these four parameters here. The pitch wheel does exactly what it sounds like. It allows you to bend the pitch up or down, and the range parameter allows you to set how far it will bend off the root note that you play. The mod wheel can change any of the parameters that are listed here, and is often used for things like vibrato, tremolo, or filter changes. There are quite a few of the factory patches that make use of the mod wheel to morph a patch from one texture to another. Portamento is a setting which allows the pitch to glide from one note to the next. The higher the value, the longer it takes to get to the next pitch. Key mode allows you to decide if the envelopes will be triggered each time that you play a note, or retrig, which is the most common setting, or if they will continue with the current settings when notes overlap, or legato. Legato mode works best with monophonic patches. And lastly, you choose whether the sound is monophonic, which means only one note can be heard or played at a time, by choosing a polyphony of one, or how many voices of polyphony you would like to allocate to the sound. Keep in mind that a lot of voices of polyphony can start to use up computer processing power, especially if you are stacking lots of devices together to make a combinator patch. But with most of the computer processors that have been manufactured in the last couple of years, you probably will rarely run into an issue with polyphony. Next week, we're going to be continuing with our Synth School series, and I'm going to be focusing on the Maelstrom Grain Table Synthesizer. Now, since we have covered a lot of the basic functions of things like oscillators, filters, envelopes, LFOs, and modifiers in these last few weeks, we can skip some of those basics and we'll really be able to focus on what makes the Maelstrom unique. Well, that's it for another week. Again, I'm James Bernard, and I will see you all very soon with another tip. Bye.